All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at a little bit of Canadian literature, Canadian horror literature in the form of The Troop, um, a book written by Nick Cutter. So I'm kind of reading two books at the same time already and I can't overload myself too much. I got a lot going on in my day-to-day -day life. So I like to have kind of an audiobook going on at the same time. So I figured I'd pick this up in the audiobook form and listen to it from there. Now, whenever I pick up an audiobook, I the narrator for me is really important. If you check out my review, for the great secret show audiobook a bad narrator can just absolutely destroy a good book so when i picked up the troop i was actually pleasantly surprised because i had actually listened to this narrator before which doesn't happen too often for me his name is Corey brill and he was the one who narrated ken Liu's paper menagerie and other uh, short stories which is a phenomenal short story uh, collection um okay so the one argument that i am going to make for this book is that when it comes to horror genre i actually think that audiobook might be the better avenue for it. I guess it depends on the book really, but it kind of gives you that campfire vibe, especially if the narrator is doing like a really good job at capturing the atmosphere. And I think that Corey Brill really does that well in, in The Troop. Now, I, I've mentioned this before, but I have a habit of going into Goodreads and Amazon and just seeing what other people thought of the books I just finished reading, just to see kind of what the consensus around the book is. Now, when it comes to the negative reviews, there are kind of one of two things that stand out. One is either people don't like body horror, they don't like uh, like the grossness that's, that's coming out of it, and that got to them. The other one, and I'm gonna bring this up because I think it's important in terms of going into this book, and, and part of that is because I went into this book with very little expectation, and because of that, I think I enjoyed it more, um, and, and we'll get a little bit into that in a second. The other critique towards this book tends to be that it's it's, there's no twists or turns. There's nothing necessarily fresh or exciting. The plot is very straightforward. Um, it's somewhat predictable. And, and for a lot of people, it just fell flat. Even when I was halfway through this and I was telling people I was really enjoying the story, I would preface that by saying, look, it's, it's as straightforward of a plot as you can get. It's not super, super complicated. You're not gonna see any genre bending, genre defying aspects to this. And to be honest with you, I'm not really like a, a diehard horror reader. So if you're like really, really well versed in the horror genre, I don't think you're gonna get anything new from this book. However, that didn't take anything away from the book for me personally, I still thoroughly enjoyed the read. Now, perhaps the first indication of blandness, and I don't mean to say this in a rude way, uh, this takes place, okay, it's, it's written by a Canadian, and it takes place on Prince Edward Island. If you're watching this and you are not from Canada, Canada doesn't have states, it has provinces and territories, and Prince Edward Island, if I were to show you a map of Canada, I'll put it up on the screen now, and you were to guess where it is, would you think it's here? Would you think it's there? Uh, no, it's all the way down over here. Um, it is by far the smallest province in the country, uh, both by size and by population. I double checked the population of the least populous United States. And I think it's Wyoming with like 500,000 people or some, something along those lines. Prince Edward Island has about 100,000 people on it, I think. It's definitely under 200,000. I have met precisely one person from Prince Edward Island in my entire life. He was an awesome guy. I loved him. He was great. Uh, but besides that, nobody really knows what goes on on Prince Edward Island besides growing potatoes. Not a whole lot of news comes out of Prince Edward Island. Maybe that's why he decided to set it there. Maybe the author's from there. I have no idea. I didn't do too much looking into it. So at the risk of ruining any of the plot of this book, and it won't really because I'm not giving away much else than what's on the back jacket cover, is it's basically Lord of the Flies with worms and they're highly infectious or, or they get into other people. Um, and then basically you have a bunch of kids, a troop who are on some kind of scouts retreat and they get abandoned in a very Lord of the Flies-esque scenario and they have to deal with this. Um, you get a little bit of like, I can't remember where I learned this term from. It might've been like a high school drama class, but it was like when you're writing, do, as a writing exercise, doing kind of like the seven dwarves to make sure that your characters aren't all you know, too similar, which might be uh, a tendency that newer writers have. You kind of give each one their own very distinct aspect of the personality. And that also rubbed a few people the wrong way in terms of they thought that they were almost caricatures of, of real kids because they really fit into certain stereotypical mode, modes. Like you have your, your overweight, uh, nerdy character. You have your uh, bigger jock type character and and the thing is is part of that is caricature but also part of that is is just standard roles that kids fall into 
So, I mean, that line is gonna be drawn a little bit different for every person. The one thing about this book though, that I thought really stood out to me was, I love the way it was narrated and it's kind of like, it struck me as kind of like a Stand By Me type story. And that's funny because it was, Stand By Me was based off of the short story, The Body by Stephen King. And Stephen King does praise the troupe. Um, even though a lot of people who read Stephen King apparently don't like the troupe that much. Um, but you know, the body slash stand by me has really nothing to do with the body. It has to do with the kids. Now, I would argue that the relationship between the kids and stand by me is a little bit stronger and something that you can hold on to maybe a little bit better in, in that story than in the troop. But in the troop, that's kind of what you're building on, right? You, you bounce back and forth between kind of the history of the kids, what they're like, how they grew up. Um, how that plays into their personality and their dynamic while they're trying to figure out this thing that's going on on the island. Now, I, I bring up that it's in Prince Edward Island, but it's actually in a place called Falstaff Island, which is just off PEI, I believe. Again, I didn't really double check a lot of this stuff. Um, it doesn't really matter that it's in Prince Edward Island, to be honest with you. This could be any nondescript area of the woods or any island that has, you know, the same general climate and you would be able to pull off the exact same story without any details really changing. And yeah, basically you just follow these kids into the conclusion of the story, which I'm not gonna go through because this is such a basic plot and it's so forward um, and, and kind of all out laid out in front of you that, I, I mean, there's not much more, more, to, more to reveal than that, but you're really, what you're reading this story for is really the interaction between the kids. And the interaction between the kids, again, if you're reading a lot of these types of stories, which I typically don't, which is probably one of the reasons why I enjoyed it a lot more than some of the people that I've seen review this book, you're reading it for the interactions between them. Now, when it comes to horror, uh, horror is a very strange thing for me. I don't read a ton of horror, right? I've, I've read a little bit of Stephen King. I've read a little bit of Clive Barker, a few short stories here and there. Um, horror isn't something that like I don't. I can't read it and get scared or creeped out or anything like that. I, I tend not to have that reaction. Um, horror and humor tend to bounce off me a little bit when it comes to when it comes to reading. What I look for in the horror is like the atmosphere of the entire thing, and that atmosphere kind of does build in a satisfying way for me, at least in the story. The horror that you are gonna get in this is a little bit more visceral body horror. There's not a whole lot of suspense. There's nothing that's like super eerie or anything like that. It's the aspect of there's one psychological aspect of, of one or two characters that kind of got to me a little bit, but in terms of like being creepy about what's happening, a lot of it is just kind of the gruesomeness of the consequences of coming into contact with these worms. Now, again, I did listen to this, but I think one of the strengths of this book is that uh, it was very well written. I thought the language was very evocative. I thought the way that he kind of pieced together certain scenes is he really painted a picture of it that really came to life in my mind uh, through the audiobook. And I found that while I was listening to it, that was, again, the kind of strength of the book. It wasn't so much that I'm getting thrown into this new idea, this new kind of um, interesting plot or very dynamic um, conflict that that's going on. It's very basic, it's very forward, but the way he articulates it and the kind of relationships he's trying to build through that um, and through the writing directly is where kind of the strength in the book lie for me. It's kind of like the skill of the storyteller, right? Like the plot is only so much of it and the way that it's told um, is, where, is where you kind of get swept away in it. And I think that's what what really caught me about the troop is that the way it was told, the language he used, and the narrator that they they hired in order to kind of translate this um, to an oral storytelling kind of format, I, I think really jived well for me. I actually don't think I, I would have disliked this book if it was in print. If I read it in print, I just don't think maybe it would have hit me, uh, hit me as well. And there were a few scenes that I actually did th that I felt myself quite captivated by where like I didn't want to be doing anything while I was listening to them so that I can kind of spend some time with those scenes. So I thought that was worthy of note. I do love those stories that, that give that flashback to childhood and kind of give you that, you know, pre-adolescent um, scope into life. Kind of uh, evokes the last threads of childhood and kind of being thrust into a very adult, very real reality that maybe childhood didn't offer up until that point. And I think that's a lot of what happens in the troupe. So if you're looking for like a super fresh, exciting new angle on horror, you're probably not gonna find it here. But if you like that kind of last thread of childhood, kind of losing the innocence, uh, survival type Lord of the Flies story, um, this might be up your alley. If you have read the troupe, let me know what you think about it. Other than that guys, I'll catch you on the next video and see you then. Oh,